Good morning. Welcome to our YouTube channel. Today is the first of our series and we're teaching you some tech topics and our first one is databases. This is the introduction presentation that lets you know what the different components are so that you'll understand the other videos. Um, let's go ahead and get started. So, um, okay, introduction to databases. Let's go for the definition of a database. A database is an organized collection of data that can be easily accessed, managed, and updated. Databases are integral to applications, enabling the storage and retrieval of large amounts of information effectively. It is possible to see databases in more places than you think. Everything from games to mailings can use them. So what I'm going to tell you is that databases are an essential component of programming. Not every program uses them, but a large, like 80% of them do. It stores information and brings it back up in a powerful way so you can use it. There are a lot of games that use it, like RGB, RPGs use it to keep the information and update it. Um, it can be used in a dentist's office for being able to like look up who in your town is using your dentist. It's more than just addresses. It's harnessing information and linking it together so that it's very powerful. The importance of databases is that they're critical all over the world. Databases play a critical role in modern technology, facilitating data storage, retrieval, and management. They support decision-making processes by providing timely and accurate information essential for business operations. A good foundation in databases is required for corporate IT, data science, data and, and data analytics, to name a few. Um, this is my quote. Databases, in short, help you use information in the information age. Types of databases. There are several types of databases, each serving a different purpose, such as relational, NoSQL, object-oriented, and object-oriented databases. Understanding the distinctions among these types helps in selecting the right database for a specific application. Relational databases emphasize linking and relating data. Um, NoSQL can sometimes break up the tables differently than a relational database, have one really large unnormalized data uh, table or whatever. We're gonna go over that. An object-oriented fo focuses on the objects in the database. So that might be useful in an RPG. So let's go ahead and go over these. All right, so let's read the definition of relational databases. Relational databases store data in tables, facilitating easy access and manipulation through structured query language. They ensure that data integrity through constraints and relationships among tables, making them ideal for operational applications with complete queries. Relational databases make the information in tables related to solve problems. Information is out there in the super information highway. And the thing is, is until you reach out and grab it and make it related to the things you do and the things that you're trying to achieve, it's just static and it sits there. Relational databases form those relationships and come back at you to solve problems. NoSQL is just not doing it um, the way that we traditionally do it with SQL. No SQL. Um, it can have different structures. Let's go ahead and read the definition. No SQL databases provide flexible schema designs and are optimized for large scale data storage and retrieval. They support various data models such as document, key value, comma family, column family stores, making them suitable for big data applications and real-time web services. These databases are not always broken up by normalization and follow their one schemata. Normalization is an industry standard for creating power, power, proper structure in tables. So you see they might have a larger table than you're used to, so it 
references something quickly. When we go into SQL, we'll talk about breaking up the table and making indexes and stuff. Um, this is just another way to go about it, and it sometimes fits larger data sets. All right, object-oriented databases. Object-oriented databases store data in the form of objects as used in object-oriented programming. This structure allows for more complex data representations, including inheritance and encapsulation, and making it suitable for applications requiring rich data models. Sometimes this form follows more closely the data flow diagram or an entity relationship diagram. Hierarchical databases. Hierarchical databases organize data in a tree-like structure with a single parent for each record, which allows for a clear and efficient navigation through relationships. Despite its limitations in flexibility and scalability, it's effective for specific applications such as organizing information in file systems. This can add some security and requires locking records during an edit. That's something, we'll, we'll, we'll do a video on why you have to lock a record when somebody edits it. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about database management systems. Database management systems are what is fueling this information revolution. Um, they use them in corporations, they use them in um, public services and all kinds of things. The database management system is the main structure system for using information in an organization. Let's talk about the functions. The functions of a database. A database management system provides essential functions such as data storage, retrieval, security, and integrity management. It facilitates efficient data handling and ensures that users and applications interact with the data securely and effectively. A database management system puts together a whole system to solve the problems of an organization. Popular database management system examples. Examples of widely used database management systems include MySQL, Oracle, Microsoft SQL Server, and PostgreSQL. Each offers unique features catering to different business needs and scales, from small applications to large enterprise systems. Their language is only slightly different in syntax. If you have learned one, you can learn the others. I have to tell you, looking at and having learned more than one of these, you'll find that you just like flip a command or put the dot in a different place or whatever. Once you've learned one, picking up the syntax of another might be about 30 minutes, but there's things like structuring the queries that you have to learn that's similar. Okay, a database management system versus a file system. A database management system provides structured data management allowing for complex queries and data relationships, unlike a traditional file system, that enhance data integrity and security features compared to a file system. A database management system is also quicker and tailored to the needs of the organization. I have to tell you that the database management system is considered a lot more robust because of the relationships and being able to solve problems in the business than just a file system. The linkages and being able to move information and solve problems, it's way more flexible and way more dynamic than just storing information in separate files. Okay, let's talk about SQL. SQL is maybe the fundamentals of a query language. You saw that we have put three different versions of it, MySQL, SQL, and PostgreSQL. Um, I was telling you that it's very like, only minute changes between how they work and it's because of patents. So let's talk about a structured query language. SQL or structured query language is the standard language for querying and managing relational databases. It enables users to read, create, update, and delete data efficiently across a database system. This is considered the industry standard and many other languages use it as a starting point. SQL 
is simple and you can learn it in 30 minutes. And it's the most dynamic and robust relational database tool I've ever seen. Okay, basic SQL commands. Essential SQL commands include select for querying data, insert for adding records, and update for modifying existing data, and delete for removing data. Mastering these commands is crucial for the effective database interaction. The commands are not difficult and are close to the natural language, but don't have a natural structure. Data manipulation language is a set within SQL. Data manipulation language, or DML, is a subset of SQL used for managing data within database objects. DML includes commands such as select, insert, update, and delete. Crucial for data handling, you will find that you will need to use DML to properly take advantage of SQL's power. This part of the language creates relationships between the information. DML is the really powerful part inside there that creates all of the relationships so that you can get solutions out of your data. Okay. Okay. Database design principles. So we're going to go over a few things that are going to be more detailed videos later that are database design principles. And the thing is, people ask me about these all of the time. So I'm giving the introduction of what they are in this video, hoping you watch this first. And then we're going to get some breakouts of um, what these things are and how to do them. There's, there's something where I'm giving you three components. One of them is normalization. Normalization, everybody gets a weird look on their face and goes confused because the definition sounds like this. Normalization is the process of organizing data in a database to reduce redundancy and improve data integrity. Through techniques like eliminating duplicate data and ensuring relationships among tables, normalization enhances the efficiency of database operations. Normalization is used to make the table ready to form relationships in the database. Broken up correctly, it searches without breaking and will perform the search quickly. This, they just used a lot of text speak to say that we have written down the best way to break up your tables for SQL. You can use it in some of the other formats too, but this way, if you use all of the normal forms, you'll end up with the best tables for linking and relating your data. That's what normalization is. When they say make a table normal, they mean go ahead and normalize it so it doesn't have any of the bad dependencies or redundancies that they don't want in it that end up breaking. Okay, data flow diagrams. Analysis uses two tools, data flow diagrams and entity relationship diagrams. Data flow diagrams, you'll see one on the screen. What it is, is looking at where your components are and how people need to access the information so your database is designed correctly. Another thing that you can do is looking at entity relationships. Entity relationships, it looks at an entity and sees what their relationship is to the data. The entity relationship model is a visual representation of data. It's relationships within a database. It utilizes entities, attributes, and relationships to depict how data interacts, facilitating a better understanding of database structure and design. So you can see on this slide, I've shown you that what the ER diagram is doing is showing you every entity that needs to access the information. And then it's also showing you what information it needs to access. There's something very important in security where you might go like in a medical database where they only access information they need to access at each point. Like the pharmacy might not be able to log in and see cholesterol numbers. Or they might not be able to see the address of where they live. <clears throat> Maybe they, yeah, they would need that. But you see, you might... You only do as need there. Okay, so one thing I want to teach you is that normal form and some of these things are considered best practices. 
Best practices is when you follow the industry recommended standards for your work. For example, a best practice is to put your tables into normal form. All right, thank you for your support. I used Prezi to help me make this video. So I've gone ahead and put their, um, I've gone ahead and put their uh, address up on the screen. We're going to be doing some breakout topics on this. And when you're done with this series, you're going to be a master at databases. Okay. All right. Excellent. Have a good day. And um, yeah, have a great day. And I hope you have fun.